the last day of the week here on Money Time at Money Nine. And about a week ago, people were getting sloshed with all the goodies during Diwali. But now, buying a sweet or for that matter, having a Sunday biryani is going to cost you more because prices of staple food items have begun to rise after Diwali. Both wheat and rice have become costlier by 7%. Cooking oil too had become costlier after Diwali. Price of basmati rice, which is used in biryani, has increased by around 4%. Milk prices are already high. Milk traders have said that milk will continue to remain costly in the current financial year. Now, let's look at the current prices of staple food items in the country. According to Ministry of Consumer Affairs, Food and Public Distribution, the average price of rice in the country is 38 rupees per kg. Price of wheat is 31 rupees per kg. Price of sunflower oil is 170 rupees per litre, while that of Vanaspati is 146 rupees per litre. And if you live in Delhi, then all eyes to the screen because the clock is going to extend its ticking just for you. Now, if you haven't applied for power subsidy for the month of October, then you have time till November 15. Earlier, the last day was October 31. But Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal has tweeted that the last day of applying for power subsidy for the month of October is being extended to November 15. To apply for power subsidy, you can give a missed call on 7011. 311111. You will get a link via SMS. You can also visit the nearest office or customer care center of the electricity board. Fill up a form and apply for the subsidy. Well, another day, another private lender has hiked its lending rates. This time, it's DCB Bank. Different types of loans like personal, home and auto loans with the lender are going to get costlier. DCB has hiked its one-year MCLR to 10.23%. Bank sanctions most of the consumer loans at the rate of interest determined on the basis of one-year MCLR. This means consumer loans of DCB Bank are set to become further costlier. Well, banks can increase its lending rates all at once and deter consumers. But mutual fund investors, on the other hand, who are looking to invest in small and mid-cap stocks are going to have a field day. Samco Mutual Fund's newly launched Tax Saver Fund will mandatorily invest in mid and small cap stocks. The NFO will open for subscription on November 15. It is an ELSS. So, you can also avail a tax benefits under 80 Section 80C. Umesh Kumar Mehta, who is the CIO of Samco Asset Management, said that investors will get exposure to efficient, growing mid and small cap businesses. The fund will enable investors to be a part of India's growth story through investments in mid and smaller sized leaders of niche sectors. And we are not done with just that as far as mutual fund goes because Axis Mutual Funds NFO that tracks state government securities open for subscription on Friday. Investors can apply till November 16. It's, it's an open-ended debt fund that will invest in the constituents of the Nifty SDL September 2026 index. Aditya Pagaria will manage the scheme. No exit load will be levied on redemption of units. State securities are considered as highly liquid instruments. These typically trade at a premium to central government securities. In the past, investors have got around 0.5% higher yield on state securities than central government's securities. Before you think of investment, you need money. And for money, you need a job. And our next news is on the job market. According to a report by Team Lee Services, around 73% employers working in 579 different organizations have expressed intent to hire new talents in services sector of the country. This report is based on a survey and projections are for third quarter of the current financial year. Now, let's see in which cities the employers have expressed their intent to hire employees. Employers in Metro and Tire 1 cities have indicated a higher intent to hire compared to Tire 2 and Tire 3 cities. According to the report, the employment opportunities will be the highest in Bengaluru, Chennai, Delhi, Hyderabad, Mumbai, Pune and Kolkata. Organizations will be largely hiring for IT, sales and engineering roles. Employment opportunities will be higher for freshers and junior talents than mid and senior level employees. If you are a shallow order of PNG, then you are sorry. If you are a shareholder of PNG, then you are going to hit the jackpot. The shares of Procter and Gamble traded ex-dividend on Friday. The board of the FMCG juggernaut had set November 7 as a record date for finalizing shareholders for dividend payment. In India, you need to have shares of the companies 
two days before the record date to become eligible for any event. This means those investors who had held shares of the FMCG major on November 3 would get the credit of the dividend. Its board had earlier announced dividend of 65 rupees per share for FY23. On Friday, the script advanced marginally to close at 14,100 rupees per share. Well, it's definitely a bonanza for PNG shareholders, but someone on Dalal Street is certainly lighting things up. Shares of Hamara Raja batteries was in huge demand on Friday. The counter touched upper circuit at 571 rupees a piece. The stock closed 9.54 percent higher at 569 rupees per share. The automotive battery manufacturer had reported impressive quarterly results in the second quarter of FY23, beating street estimates. Its board had also declared an interim dividend of 2.9 rupees for FY23. Stock brokerage firm Motilal Oswal is neutral on the stock with a price target of 590 rupees per share. Looks like the IPO season is gonna heat things up this winter season. Non-banking lender 5 Star Business Finance has announced details of its 1,960 crore rupees IPO. The three-day initial share sale process will open on October 4 and conclude on November 9. The IPO will be 100% OFS, meaning promoters will offload, offload their stake in the company. The NBFC has fixed a price band of 450 to 474 rupees. Retail investors will be able to subscribe to 31 equity shares in a single lot. Well, Bikaji snack packets usually fly off the shelf like the speed of light. But that was not the case with its IPO. The snacks company also got a similar response on day two. Only 60% of the IPO size was subscribed by 4.15pm on Friday. Quota of retail investors was subscribed more than 100%. While quota of non-institutional investors were subscribed by 42%. QIB's quota was subscribed not even 1%. GMP of shares of Bikaji Foods fell to 27 rupees on day two of the IPO. November 7 will be the last day for applying in the initial share sale process. And the last one on the cards is of Medanta's IPO. Let's see how investors have welcomed its IPO in Dalal Street. Well, only 35% of the IPO size was subscribed by 4.15pm on Friday. Quota of retail investors was subscribed only 13%, while that of QIBs was subscribed only 56%. The GMP of shares of Global Health fell to 15 rupees on day 2. Global Health runs and operates Medanta brand of hospital chain in India. The 1,103 crore rupee IPO of micro lender Fusion Microfinance closed on Friday. By 4.15 pm, it was subscribed only 77%. Retail investors stayed away, subscribing only 24% of their allotment side. Well, that's all we have for you today and for this week here on Money Time at Money Nine. Money Time will come to your screens again on Monday at the same time. So keep watching the show for all the personal finance news that matters to your pocket. Also, download the Money9 app and subscribe to the Money9 English's YouTube channel. This is me Ajay signing off. Take care, good night and happy weekend.